Hi, I'm Lyndon Lucason with Shearer Inc. Today we're working on the 498 Forge Harvester from Kloss. We are here to install one of our HO processors in, uh, 498, in the 498 machine. We want to take you through the install and everything that goes along with uh, putting in one of our processors. Here's our HO processor that just arrived at the dealer. Uh, we're just getting everything out and getting ready to put on the machine. shorter than the other. That's for the drive side of the processor since the drive side is always heavier. When you start the install, make sure that you always review the owner's manual. Within the owner's manual, we have all the information for doing all of the install of our processor, as well as all of the, the parts for the machine, replacement parts, everything that you will need. So when, you're, when you do start the install, make sure you read through this. We have all of the different systems for all of the different machines, pointing out some of the differences between the machines. The first thing we always want to do before we put in our processor is take the right side drive tire off the machine, remove the inner panel, open up the right hand side of the machine so everything is accessible for installing everything we need to put in. One of the first things that I want to point out is this is the tensioner for the KP drive belt. And we always want to look at the adjustment of this. There is adjustment at the base of this cylinder. We need to loosen these two carriage bolts and slide them back towards the rear of the machine. We always need to check the alignment of these two pulleys from the factory before we put RKP in. We want to ensure that the belt is lined up perfectly for the optimal power transmission. We always use a laser tool that fits in the center of the groove and we can shoot between the two pulleys to make sure everything is lined up. And as you can see, this one is in good position. In the situation that these two pulleys are not lined up correctly, we loosen this hub and we will move the pulley on the top to match the pulley on the bottom. Whenever we shoot the laser, we need to shoot the laser from the top pulley down to the bottom because the bottom stub is not welded perpen er, perpendicular to the frame. It is welded off at an angle, so when the machine is under load, it pulls everything in line and for your best power transmission. Before you put the KP in, one thing you need to make sure you do is remove everything that was in here from shipping, as well as the bolt uh, holding in the grass chute. 
make sure that that bolt is out of place before you put the KP in, otherwise you will have issues getting it in. In this situation, we're removing the grass chute to move some bolts on the left-hand side of the machine that will interfere with our KP. And we will also be cutting the bracket on the back of the cutter drum. To access the bolts at the base of the accelerator, we will have to remove the two side shields. Once the two metal panels are removed, we will be able to access the back side of the bolts. There are two bolts at the base of the accelerator that we will need to take loose and flip around. Here we're showing the, the carriage bolt is stuck through from the back side. We will take the carriage bolt out, flip it around, stick it through from the inside of the machine towards the outside of the machine so it will clear the KP as we roll it in. This is the bottom shield that we removed off the inside of the machine. When we put our KP in the machine, it will run up against this bolt. So we need to remove this bolt and replace it with a flat head version of that bolt. Yes, we do supply this as part of the kit. So after we install our modified bolt, you can see the position of where it is, and that gives clearance, as I said before, for the KP to slide in and out of the machine without interference. Ready? So first, we remove the pin, relocate the cylinder out of the way. I put the bracket on, that's a template which is included in the kit. I clamp it on there with a vice grip, mark the lines that are on the template. And I'll pull this template off later and show what it looks like. And then I use the template to guide my drill bit to drill the holes. mounting the ears on that come with the kit. That's supplied with our kit. Say that one more time. We, we put the pin in that's supplied with our kit. Find the hole. 
Next thing we will look at is plumbing in the air system for our oiler. To do that, open up the door on the left hand side of the machine and we will look at the fittings that you plumb into and route the lines to get to our processor. Uh, there is an auxiliary port for air to blow off the machine up on the left hand top step. Uh, if you follow that steel line down, there is a junction fitting down by the solenoid. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking that off and we're installing a T and then we are using the factory 90 degree air fitting elbow and then we are just plumbing off of that. As we are coming off our 90 degree elbow, we are coming back six inches to install our air shutoff. We are coming along the back side of the hydraulic system and going through into an elbow, which will then go into our side panel, and we will then be hooking into our receiver dryer and our sheer oil mist system. After we get the airline routed and the fittings installed, we will need to remove this panel and we will need to drill holes to mount the oiler as well as the coalescing filter. When we want to drill the holes and, and mount the coalescing filter and the oiling system, we want to uh, make sure that we are not damaging any lines that are behind this panel. So we will always put the head of the bolt in from the back so we have a flush mount on the back side. And we always like to mount the oiler kind of centered on this part of the panel, uh, somewhat close to center of these two bolts. Um, anywhere is really good, but it's just kind of a good general orientation. And also where this goes, this is a big open area. There are really no oil lines behind it. Um, we just need to make sure we're down far enough so we won't hit into the bracket that comes across the back of here. And we also want to have it up high enough that we're not interfering with anything below the filter and having everything nice and close so we can route the air lines and make everything look nice and clean. Once we get the plate mounted back up in the machine, we want to route our air line to the inlet and the exhaust of the coalescing filter into the inlet of the oiler. We always put a, a holder on this line to keep it from vibrating and rubbing against the metal and wearing through. And we also have a cap for our exhaust plug here that we put a bracket on that as well to hold it in place when the KP is not in operation. Once everything is hooked up, the last thing you want to do is start the machine. Make sure that you adjust the pressure to 35 PSI. And there's also a warning here, whenever the KP is not installed, you want to make sure that the air system is shut off by using the valve on the other side of the wall. To install the monitor system, you always want to take out the top section of the firewall, and we will drill a hole through it and install a cable that will go through and hook up to our junction box outside of the firewall, and we'll get our power and monitor will be on the inside of the machine. So what we're doing is we're drilling a three quarter inch hole. That is the diameter of the connector plug. And what we're doing is we're sticking it through. Uh, we are, they are sending a rubber grommet, which the rubber grommet we will stick through and it'll stick in the piece of the patch field. Um, what it is, is just an insert. Once you get the connector through, it holds on both sides. What I usually do is just put a little silicone around it just to seal it tight and make sure no water, full pressure washing, or any other dust will stick through. I usually stick about 12 inches through into the inside of the cab. And the rest of the side I let dangle out, which will then hook up to our um, electrical junction box on the outside inside the doghouse. What we're doing is we are taking and hooking up our power cable to our Century 2.0 multi-box. We usually mount that just on the inside of the panel, inside the doghouse. And all we'll do is we'll take and we'll plug it into our P1 input. And then the excess that will dangle will just coil up and zip tie it up off to the side here. 
just to keep it out of the way. Is we send the kit with a short cable and a long cable. Your short cable you want will want to use on the outside of the machine to come through the firewall and hook up to the junction box. Your log cable you will want to use inside and hook up to the monitor. The next wire you'll need to route is the wire for the monitor that goes down to the KP and it always works well to put that up here, coil excess up here as we did before and route down uh, through this angle channel and then out and down to the KP. Routing the long cable from the monitor uh, down into the circuit panel um, and in the circuit panel we will then connect it to our T. Uh, we have the one coming from the patch field. It does not matter whether you're in connector one or connector two. Uh, either way, it's just a plug and play system. So I usually go uh, from the monitor out in the doghouse, I usually just go to two. And then from the camera monitor, I will just plug that into one. And there are slotted holes in there so you can't cross thread it or get it in. So once it plugs in, give it a turn. Get them both tight, and then they send a power cable. Power cable, can't get that screwed up, there's only one plug in for that. Just get it turned so that it drops in, tighten up the fitting, and then in the back right corner we have two mini cigarette plug-ins. You can pick either the keyed power or constant power, it doesn't matter. What I usually do is I pick hot power all the time. There is a switch that is on the monitor itself. So he does, he can, if he needs keyed power for a radio or anything like that, on the right hand side there's a toggle switch. He can just turn it on and off when he's done with it at the end of the day. Once we get the KP out and ready to install, one of the first things that we're going to want to look at is these brackets right here on both sides. And we will look now to decide for this machine whether we leave these brackets in place or we need to remove them. Coming from the factory, there, these hold down bolts will be set in two different locations. It will either be in the rear location or the front location. These bolts are what hold down the front of the KP. There's one right here, and as you can see, there's one on the other side of the machine as well. Excuse me, these are in the rear position towards the rear of the machine, so we will want to remove the bracket on the KP. If this bolt was in the front position, the front position is higher, and we would leave that bracket in place. In this situation, we need to remove the bracket. As we said, we have drilled and tapped holes on the frame of the KP, so you can put that bracket in a storage position if you ever need to use it in the future. We remove the pulleys before we do the first install on the machine. It makes it easier to get it into the machine, get everything lined up the way we need it. To ensure a tight fit of the KP into the machine, sometimes we will grind away the powder coat or the hold down bolt so we can get this into the machine. We do know that when we put these in you will be scraping paint to get it in and we want to do that to make sure that this fits as it should. A couple things to watch when you're putting the KP in. Make sure that you don't bump into the rotary screen. It is very fragile. We don't want to put holes in that. Also the handle on top of the KP, there's a black handle for the adjustment. Make sure that is facing towards the front of the machine so that is not sticking out as well.
if you are off by a cog using a pry bar just to move the KP ahead on one side is the easiest way to get it to line up. On the first fit, we're always going to fit real tight up against this bolt. So as you can see, we bumped up against this. We will back out the KP and grind a flat on the bottom of that head so everything fits nice and tight. After we get the KP in and rolled into place, last thing is to tighten it down with these two brackets. And next we'll move on to putting the pulleys on and lining everything up. After the KP is installed, we'll also hook up the monitoring system. Do you have the other plug for that one? Do you have one anywhere? Or? Yeah, on the bench. All right, next we will hook up the monitor cable to the KP. It always works out well to have the plug hanging from the, the a metal eyelet up above. Uh, you can disconnect it from there and put it down onto the KP. Kind of holds it in place so that when you're going and setting your pulleys, you know that it's 100% locked in, can't move, and then we'll go and align the KP pulleys. After we get the processor installed and tightened into position, then the last thing we'll put the pulleys on and get pulleys aligned and set. After we get the KP into place and get it strapped in, we will need to move this cylinder out of the way so we can install the front pulley and get everything lined up as it should be. Again, we put our laser tool on the pulley, centered off of the groove. We'll put our laser on the top. And then we line it up and torque it down. I always set the pulley, get it snug, make sure it's lined up where it needs to be. And then we will back out the KP, lock the rolls in position, and do the final torque on the hubs. Once we get the front pulley set place, then we will set the rear pulley to the front one. Since the rear pulley is smooth and it goes off the back of the belt, I always go by eye off of the outside of the pulley. Um, actually, when we put this processor in and out of the machine, you will always want as much room as you can get. I actually always cheat this pulley in as far as I can have it flush with the outside of the groove pulley so when we move it we don't run into the bars on the side of the machine. After we get the front pulley lined up then we can put the cylinder back into place. After we get the front groove pulley set, then we will back the KP out of position so we can lock the rolls in place and we will torque the, do the final torque on all of the hub assemblies. So the best way to torque our pulleys is to take a rag, tie a knot, put it down between your rolls, and that will hold the rolls in place while we do the final torque. 
So when we start torquing the pulleys, I always go 180 degrees from the split of the lock once everything is snug. Now we will start torquing to 32 and a half foot pounds and we will go around in a clockwise pattern for minimum of three times. We will torque at 32 and a half, we'll torque over torque because in this situation, as soon as you torque one bolt, the bolt behind it got loose again. So we'll go around at 32 and a half and then we'll go back and check at 30 foot pounds to make sure that none of the bolts are moving. All right, after you get done, uh, after the third time, and make sure you always stop at the split, um, then put your torque wrench back to 30 foot-pounds, and we'll check them at 30 foot-pounds to make sure that they do not turn. And I always spot check a couple, just to make sure. And looks in this case like we're, like we're good. So now we'll move on to the next one. For torquing the rear roll, we'll take the tail of the towel, put it down between the rolls, and that holds it in position for torquing the rear one. If you want to torque the groove pulley in the front of the KP, you'll put the tail over the top of the front roll and draw in the towel and that will lock in the front roll. After we get our pulleys torqued, then we will roll the KP back into position. We will install the belt and we'll do a runoff to make sure that everything is in position, there's no interferences with anything, and everything performs as it should. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check the rolls for clearance within the KP. When we start the machine, the transition chute on the bottom of the machine will come up into position. We wanna make sure that there's no interference with the KP itself. So we'll start the machine now and roll over the rolls manually. Go ahead. As you can see, the rolls spin freely, so we're good to hook everything up and do a test run. After the KP is back in position, we'll install our drive belt. Even when the side shield is in position, I always like to route it around the accelerator first, make sure it's in the grooves as it should be, around the front groove pulley of the KP, over the smooth pulley of the processor, and finally around the idle pulley. And now it's in position to do our test run. After the KP is installed, we always check the pressure on the oil system and set it to 35. And then we always check the KP itself to make sure we're getting the oil mist to the bearings of the KP. As you can see here, it comes out in a nice fog and we just need to visually verify that that is working. If you see the fog from the oil, it's working. If you don't see anything, then there's probably something wrong. 
So a recap of today, we went through the install of the KP itself, the install of the, what, the lubrication system, as well as the install of the monitor system. I hope that today's video is informative and helpful for anybody who is watching. Um, another thing with putting everything back together, obviously we have not done that yet, but putting all the panels on and everything back in place should be fairly self-explanatory. And if you need anything else, or if you have any additional questions, feel free to call us at the number below.